Insane law enforcement vehicles. But first, thanks for leaving us this comment on our unbelievable discoveries in the South Pacific video. We'll be sure to rock on, and you guys can keep expecting great, unique videos from us. We won't let you down. Number 10, US Standard Police Car. To start this video, we thought it'd be a good idea to show you how your average day police car looks like in the US. Most of these vehicles are well equipped to handle high speed pursuits and also answer routine calls. Traditionally, the US only uses American made vehicles such as Chevy, Dodge, and Ford, although there are a few exceptions. This photo here, taken of the Chicago police, is a good example of Chevy Tahoes being used. In general, standard cop cars aren't always easy to spot since the models that they use are used also by civilians. Cop cars in France, for example, seem to generally take this shape and are less intimidating. Each paint scheme in the US is generally determined by the jurisdiction. Standard equipment in each vehicle in the US includes a 12-gauge shotgun, a radio, a flashlight, a dashboard cam, and a bad guy in the back seat. Number 9. Humvee Police Cars Now you know what the standard police car here in the US is like, it's time to show the crazier stuff. Humvees were mass-produced, especially to be used in the wars in Iraq. With somewhat of a surplus of these vehicles, the police have decided to slowly start adding them to their fleets. With more rugged terrains in the state of Colorado, the city of Lone Tree and Central City added a few of these. This photo here shows a Hummer being used in the city of Highland Hills in Ohio. This one here appears to have been donated from a National Guard and not bought with taxpayer money. This one here was used by one of the county sheriffs in Texas. With 700 horsepower and a V8, you don't want to mess with Texas or this Humvee. Some of these Humvees like you see here are even used as police cars in China. Number 8. Salinas Armored Truck This massive armored truck was donated from the military to the Salinas Police Department in California. The tank-like vehicle is worth $650,000 and can provide armor protection against bombs, rifle, and pistol fire. Although it was technically a donation and not from city pair money, the upkeep and maintenance of this thing has a heavy price tag and someone is going to have to pay for it. Number 7. Bulletproof Patrol Car In an effort to make patrols a little safer for police in the US, they began to develop bulletproof materials for standard patrol cars that can withstand shots from armor-piercing rounds. Here in this photo, we see the types of ammunition used during the testing process in Michigan. For security reasons, they didn't say exactly which caliber it wasn't able to withstand, but due to the materials it's made from, my guess would be that it can stop a shot from the AK-47. The car's doors are fitted with ballistic panels that have two layers of Kevlar. This was fired at close range with many different weapons including high power rifles like you see here. Number 6. The MRAP In our most expensive military machines video, we mentioned how MRAPs were making their way from the battlefield and into the hands of law enforcement. These extremely well armored mine resistant vehicles are not only extremely powerful but also intimidating. They can withstand the blast of a Claymore mine. When riots began to get out of control in Ferguson, Missouri, the St. Louis County Police sent out this MRAP in response to shots being fired. The MRAPs have apparently become highly demanded by police departments in recent years, which almost makes you believe they're preparing for a full-scale breakdown of society or something. Between 2012 and 2014, over 465 cities in the U.S. have requested to add one of these to their fleet. With each one costing about $500,000 each, it's going to take a little bit for your department to get one of these. You better believe though that the FBI got their hands on one of these. In order to receive an MRAP, the jurisdiction must meet certain requirements such as shootings and also SWAT operations. The loudspeakers, heavy fuel requirements, and emergency lights can easily set them back an additional 70 grand. This MRAP that you see here on the left was dispersed during the Dakota Pipeline riots and is actually equipped with a sound cannon that will emit a horrifying eardrum bursting noise that many compare to as being loud as a jet taking off. Number 5. Doraville Police Vehicle Cities who have more police shootings and drug problems might have good reasons to obtain military-grade vehicles, but why would the small town of Doraville, Georgia be able to obtain such a massive beast? This thing is completely capable of plowing through walls and running over cars with ease. This little suburb of Atlanta didn't have one murder from 2010 to 2013 and a population of roughly 8,000 people. The chief of police claimed the vehicle had been a valuable tool for public safety. A video online of the SWAT team was posted in 2009 showing the vehicle's sheer force. This appears to be an M113 armored vehicle which has been used as far back as Vietnam, although their website doesn't appear to show too much specifics on what kind of vehicle it is or if they still have it. During the Obama administration, he attempted to ban track vehicles for police, but most MRAPs that we saw in number 6 don't even have tracks. 
Number four, the Rook. So what vehicle do police use when they're about to conduct a siege on a two-story building? They call in the Rook. This vehicle, described by its manufacturers, is six tons of pure responsive force. For $250,000, the Rook can bring in four SWAT team members close enough to someone's second-story window with a security of steel armor. The extendable platform can reach up to 11 feet, and they mostly use this in case of a big standoff with police where they believe the suspect is armed. It's almost like a bulldozer that's used to shield the SWAT team. If it wanted to, we're sure it could flip over cars and destroy your house as well. It has a few special features such as cameras, gun ports, dual joystick controls, and air conditioning. Number 3. Water Cannon Vehicles Riots have been getting out of control lately, so law enforcement figures that maybe if we hose them down a little bit, they'll get mad that they're dripping wet and go home. Recently, in the city of Calais, France, police have began to bust out water cannons when violent clashes with migrants and activists break out. The water cannons are pretty high-powered, but don't seem to be quite as bad as getting pepper sprayed. These are basically like fire trucks that police use for riots. Other types have been made that would actually add electricity to the stream of water and potentially taser the entire group. In South Korea, some agencies added pink dye to the mix to help them mark the rioters, making it easier to make arrests. This one here from Germany costs about $1 million each, and the German government ordered 78 of them. Each one is made of steel and weighs 33 tons. It's capable of firing 22 liters of water per second. What do they plan on using all these vehicles for? Number 2. UH-1 Helicopter With the surplus of military vehicles, it makes more sense for those to get put to use by the police, right? They seem to be able to get away with it by labeling them as donations. And here you can see a case where a military-grade helicopter conducting a search and rescue operation was donated to the Milford, Connecticut Police Department in 2011. This former Army helicopter was given a new paint job to look more police-like. The helicopter is worth about a million dollars. It's now equipped with a spotlight for catching bad guys at night. This was donated to a city with 52,000 people and a crime rate 68% lower than the rest of Connecticut. Police claim that criminals have changed their ways and they need this to stay one step ahead of the game. And number one, police drones. Don't you feel safer with some police drones flying around the sky? The next time you think about committing some criminal behavior in your backyard, you better think twice. Thanks to advancements in drone technology, police can have more eyes in the sky than ever before. This has rose to popularity in Britain, especially in London and along the English Channel. Residents have apparently gotten fed up with the drones there, and there were over 900 complaints over the phone in the year 2015. Similar to undercover vehicles, the drones are rarely marked, and there's usually no way of knowing if it's a cop or not. As of right now, there are some laws on where people are able to fly drones, and this may restrict cops from catching on to the idea. With advanced cameras, night, and thermal vision, these could really become a force to reckon with.